Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick tutorial on expression maps in Cubase 12. For many Cubase users, myself included, managing articulations with expression maps is one of the more tedious and time-consuming tasks. And there's honestly not a lot of free and helpful information out there for beginners. So in this video, I want to discuss how I've learned to use them with my orchestral samples, specifically Orchestral Tools Berlin libraries, although it really doesn't matter what samples you're using. First, let's start by understanding what the Cubase expression maps do. When you have a VST instrument like this flute from Berlin Woodwinds, you have multiple articulations to use, depending on the library, of course. Each articulation is automatically mapped to a key switch in the sign player. That's shown here. A key switch is a MIDI note outside of the playing range of that instrument. When the note is played, the corresponding articulation is triggered. You might have enough keys on your MIDI controller or keyboard so that you can simply press those key switches when you want to change articulations, or like many people, you might decide to separate articulations out into their own tracks. Perhaps a legato track, then maybe a staccato track, and whatever else you might need in the piece of music that you're writing. You could also combine similar articulations, like all of the sustains into one track, all of the short articulations, and all of the trills, for instance, that's what I've done in the past, and managing multiple key switches that way is a bit easier than with all of the articulations all in one track. I'm not advocating for one way or another in this video, but I found that if you have a bit of music that changes articulations frequently, like this example, then manually switching the key switches within one track is a tedious process. It's also tedious to split the line into multiple tracks for each articulation. So this is where expression maps come into play. I know that Cubase's version of expression maps is a bit antiquated and confusing, especially in comparison to newer DAWs like Studio One, but I hope this video will help explain how you might still be able to get a lot out of them. I'll start with the basics. This is the expression map setup window where we can create and edit expression maps in Cubase. You can create a new map here. You can also save your maps or load previously saved maps down here. Anytime you create a map, it will be stored internally within the Cubase project that you're in. But if you want to use it in other projects, you'll need to save it. I'll create a new expression map for this Berlin Woodwind Flute 1. That automatically creates slot one in the sound slots panel. From left to right, the remote is the key switch or channel message that triggers the articulation within Cubase. This needs to be out of the playing range of the instrument. I personally like to start these at the MIDI note C, negative two. In addition to my 88 key digital piano, I also have a 25 key controller and I set the octave transposition down four octaves so that I can use it as a key switch trigger. But don't worry, the whole point of expression maps is to mostly eliminate the need for this. So it's really not that important how you set this up. Under the name, this is where you have to decide on how you're going to set this map up. I'll start with a very basic expression map. I'll create one sound slot per articulation in the sign player. If I want, Cubase will automatically assign the remote keys. I have to make sure that the root note is set to whatever starting MIDI note I want, in my case, C negative two. Now if I assign my Cubase flute track to this expression map, I can trigger each sound slot by pressing the corresponding MIDI note on my 25 key controller that's been shifted down by four octaves. But we haven't actually set the output mapping, so we're not yet getting any articulation changes in sign. To do that, I'll first assign each of these sound slots an articulation name. Cubase has a few common ones, but you may need to create a new articulation here. Cubase assigns an articulation symbol when you create a new one, but you can change that down here in the articulations panel, either with a symbol or by text. I'll just write sustain for this one. Let's just test these two articulations by mapping their outputs to sign via key switch, matching the key switch from sign, which of course you could change that in sign, but I usually don't bother. Now in the MIDI editor for this flute track, I can click to show the articulation lane and it shows the two articulations that I've set up thus far. If I want to edit how those articulations appear, I can go back into the expression map articulation list and make changes to the description or rearrange the order. You can also change the articulation type, 
either attribute or direction. Attributes affect only the note you selected, while direction is an articulation change that affects all notes after. More on that in a moment. For most of these, I like to use directional articulation changes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and route all of these articulations. This can be really tedious, and this is where I wish Steinberg would modernize the process to make everything more automated. Once I finish, I can now more easily edit the articulations in my flute track. All right, so that's the basic form of expression maps in Cubase, but there's still a few more interesting and slightly more advanced settings that I wanna go over now. The first one is using multiple articulation sound slots to organize, condense, and prioritize which articulations you use most often. Depending on your instrument, you might have different forms of the same type of articulation. For example here, portato long and portato short, or various forms of legatos or trills. Because Berlin Woodwinds has a flute one, a flute two, and a flute three, I probably will never use the non-legato sustain or non-legato runs articulation, so I'm just going to remove those articulations from both sign and from the map that I created. If you're using a library with just one flute solo, then you probably need a non-legato sustain patch, but from my experience using this library, I really never do. I've also renamed the top articulation to legato and the lowest one to runs legato. Chances are I'm going to use the normal legato way more often than the runs legato, so I'll establish a default legato and make the runs legato a secondary option. This way, if I set the articulation to legato, it will automatically default to normal legato unless I also specify it otherwise. If I want, I can do the same to trills, since I probably use normal trills more than the others. I'm guessing I use portato short just as often as portato long, so it probably makes sense to keep them separated and probably the same with all the others, but you can cater this process to your needs. So once you get a hang of it, you can start making adjustments. One thing you might consider is making some of these articulations in the second column attributes instead of directions. I recommend this if the articulation happens somewhat infrequently in your music and not for a long stretch of time. For instance, I might try making the default short note a regular staccato and then switch staccatissimo to an attribute that I have to manually select in the MIDI editor. Okay, the next improvement to these expression maps will allow you to more easily change things like vibrato or trill interval, anything requiring additional CC data. In the case of sign player, it's usually CC number three. I have a new example here that I wanna add vibrato changes to. Without expression maps, you have to either use a physical controller with MIDI CC sliders or to open up the corresponding MIDI lane and manually add the CC data. In my opinion, it's much easier to add this as an articulation option. Things get more complex if you have more than two articulation columns because I already have two types of legatos. The best way that I've found to guarantee that Cubase switches articulations correctly is to cover all possible combinations. I only have vibrato control on the normal legatos, but normal legato is either specified in the expression maps by default or with the articulation ORD as I've set it up. So whichever method has been used to get to normal legato, I need to be able to control vibrato. It's, it's a bit convoluted and silly, but it's the way I've gotten it to work. And ultimately it might make sense to separate legato types so that this isn't an issue. So I add additional slots, label them with the three types of vibratos and do that for both normal legato methods. Then I'll go into the output mapping panel and add the correct CC data number for CC3. You could use the same process for trill interval size, 
like if you have minor second, major second, minor third, etc., depending on the options in your instrument. For sine, that's all typically done with CC3. Okay, one last cool feature of expression maps that I'll demonstrate. Sometimes you'll find that you can't combine certain articulations into the same MIDI channel in Sign, or various other sample players, perhaps. For instance, in Berlin Strings, you can't combine articulations into the same MIDI channel that are organized into different folders here. That means that I can't have legatos or staccatos on the same channel as tremolos. That's just sort of an oddity with Sign, but we can use expression maps to get around that. Just as an example, I'll make an expression map for first violins that contains legato, staccato, and tremolo. The only difference is that I'll need to specify the channel number this time. It has to match the channel number within the sign player. So for legato, the key switch is C0, and the channel number is 1. For staccato, the key switch is C sharp 0, and the channel is also number 1. But for tremolo, the key switch is back to C0, but the channel is now 2. You have to make sure that every sound slot is assigned to a channel, otherwise this won't work properly. There's all sorts of additional output mapping options, like minimum or maximum note velocity or pitch. I haven't found a reason to use these yet, but maybe I will in the future. Switching channels within one track, though, can be really useful, especially with the Berlin libraries. So that's it for this video. If you have a useful tip for getting more out of Cubase expression maps, then please leave a comment below. I'm sure that there are still some things that I could be doing differently. And hopefully Steinberg will update the whole process soon. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.